Hello, everybody. Uh, so we're going to do one more example of um, using partial fractions um, to, uh, to find an antiderivative. However, this one's going to uh, take a few extra steps. Uh, if you look at the problem that I've got here, um, this is not something that looks like we would use partial fractions for. This is a really good example of, um, it's not always obvious what you should do when you get uh, an integral, right? And so I am going to, for the sake of time, go through this problem making the right steps. But that's only because I've worked it all out ahead of time, right? If, if you were looking at this problem for the first time, it might not be obvious what to do. You might try a substitution that doesn't work. You might try a different substitution. So, and we will see by the end, we will have to use several different methods for integration or algebraic tricks and things to get to the answer. And that's fine. Sometimes these problems are very long and there's nothing exceptional about this problem. It is part of uh, the process going forward in math that some of the things we have to work on, some of the questions scientists are interested in answering require uh, computations and work that can last for several pages. And so uh, this is one of the reasons why organizing, why notation and neatness and thoroughness is so important. Okay, so that's the, that's the preamble. Let's go ahead and work through this problem. Um, so we're gonna use, um, I'm going to use a substitution here, uh, and, and maybe what I'll do first is just rewrite this in notation that I prefer. Uh, radicals have their place, I suppose, and we have to be used to them because everybody uses them, but I like the, the, the rational um, exponents partially because when we're working with derivatives and uh, antiderivatives, they're, they're nice to be able to see what are the actual powers. Uh, it's more intuitive to me. And I'm going to make the following substitution. I'm going to let u be x plus 1 to the 1 half power, right? So I'm letting u be this thing right here, this expression right here, OK? So a few things are going to come from this. So if I take the derivative, I get du dx is going to be 1 half x plus 1 to the negative 1 half power. Oops. And if I manipulate this equation a little bit, I get, well, let's do a couple of things. du, uh, I'll take the two over to this side, the dx to the other side, and I'm gonna write x plus one to the negative one half as x plus one to the one half, just to make my next step more obvious. I'm going to move this denominator, right? The negative exponent puts it in the denominator. I'm gonna move this denominator to the other side, multiply by x plus one to the one half um, to both sides. And what this gives me is this, which doesn't look great because if I substitute this in, I've still got some x's flowing around, floating around. However, notice our substitution. That x plus 1 to the 1 half is what we're now representing with u. And so the replacement for dx is going to be 2u du. All right, so let's move forward. We're going to need to do one more thing, but we'll see that when we get there. So I am replacing the x plus 1 to the 1 half with u. I'm replacing the dx with 2u du. I also need to replace this x, right? Well, this is pretty simple. You can rearrange this equation to get that u squared minus 1 is equal to x, right? Square both sides, subtract the 1, OK? So that tells me what I can replace x with. And now I've got an integral with only u in it. Let's clean this up just a bit. So that constant 2 can come out front. I've got a u here and the u in the numerator, so I can multiply those together to get u squared. And I've got this. Okay, so there is our new integral after uh, this first substitution. Okay, so let's focus the constant out front. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave alone. Let's focus on this integral for the moment. Okay, so let's find an antiderivative for u squared over u squared minus one. Okay, du. So 
we're in this section on uh, rational functions using partial fraction decomposition. Here we have a rational function. We might want to jump into doing the partial fraction decomposition. However, remember that one of the expectations when we do this is that the numerator is of less degree than the denominator. But in this case, they're of the same degree. They're both quadratics. So the recommendation is to do long division. However, and, and that would work here. So if you know long division, you can do that. I'm going to demonstrate a different trick, uh, or let's call it an algebraic maneuver, to rewrite this uh, as uh, something that's more handleable and, and in the right form for our partial fractions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my numerator and I'm going to add zero to it. Okay, I'm allowed to add zero. However, the way I'm going to add zero is by adding one and taking away one, or I guess taking away one and adding one. Right. which means I can now write this just using basic properties of, uh, right, using basic properties of fractions, I can write it this way, and we see that that first fraction uh, becomes a one, okay? And, Now this is what we have. Let's use our rules of integrals and split this into two different integrals. Oops, that's supposed to be a minus one, not plus one. If it was plus one, we'd be done because that has a known antiderivative, but it was not plus one, that was an error. U squared minus one, U squared minus one, du. Okay, this first integral is simple enough, it's u. And of course, u, we can just go back to the substitution, x plus one to the one half. I still need a constant of integration, but I've got another integral to do, so we'll have one constant of integration at the end. So we've now gotten rid of this first integral. What we're left with is an integral. So now let's focus on this piece. Now we're left with that integral. This integral is. Uh, a candidate for partial fractions. So let's do some work on partial fractions. So I'm gonna do that here. So we want to, let me put a little, I'm gonna do the partial fractions work off to the side here, because what I wanna do is rewrite one over u squared minus one as a sum of fractions. My first job is of simpler fractions. My first job is to factor it. This, of course, factors into u plus one, u minus one. And what I want to do is write that in this form. Right, that if we had two fractions uh, that we see on the right, the common denominator is u plus one and u minus one. And if we can find the right constants a and b, we can make these two sides equivalent. So our first job is to multiply through by the denominator on both sides. When we multiply this denominator on the left to the, by the right side, it'll cancel in each case. And so what we'll have is a, times u minus one, right? When we canceled by u plus one, when we multiplied by u plus one, u minus one, the u plus ones canceled. And we'll have b times u plus one, right? So we've gotten rid of that denominator. We can do a little bit of algebra. I get a times u minus a plus b times u plus b, which I can rearrange to write a plus b u plus negative a plus b, right? So I've collected my u terms, my linear terms, and my constant. We want these two sides to be equal. They are only equal if the coefficients, if we think of them both as polynomials, if their coefficients are equal, meaning a plus b has to be equal to zero because there's no u term on the left, and negative a plus b has to be equal to one. That's our constant. And now I can simply add these two equations together. The a's cancel. I get 2b equals 1, 
or b equals one half. If a plus b is zero and a is one half, I'm sorry, b is one half, a has to be the opposite of that so that they sum to zero. Okay. All right. So with that in mind, I can now take this integral. 1 over u squared minus 1 du is going to be equal to the integral 1 over u plus 1 u minus 1 du, which we now know is going to be equal to the integral. So a was negative 1 half, so I'm getting a negative 1 half over, looking back up here, u plus 1 plus 1 half over u minus 1 du. And this is an, anti uh, an antiderivative that, or two antiderivatives that we can compute relatively straightforwardly. So let me just do a little bit of work here. I can take the constant out front. I've got 1 over u plus 1. I'm going to split it up into two integrals. I've got a 1 half here as well. This is 1 over u minus 1 du. These both have an antiderivative of the absolute, the natural log of the absolute value of uh, the denominator, right? If this isn't clear to you, try taking the derivative of this. You can also use a substitution to find this, right? If you let something like v equals u plus one and w equal u minus one. This is just one over v, one over w. Antiderivative is natural log, and then put your substitution back in if that's easier to see. Okay, so now I've got a whole bunch of pieces. Let's put everything back together. So our original antiderivative, we were trying to find the antiderivative of x plus 1 over x dx. And we found that this should be equal to the antiderivative of this expression, u over u squared plus 1, uh, which turned out, sorry, 2 times u squared over u squared minus 1. So I'm going to take that 2, first of all. I have a 2 there. And multiply that by the result of this red box. And in this red box, we found several things. The first term was x plus 1 to the 1 half. x plus 1 to the 1 half plus whatever we found in this blue box. And so to do the blue box, I computed the partial fractions. And then I computed what was in the blue box. That was our last computation and got these last two pieces here. So this will be a negative, just copying the last line in blue, negative 1 half, natural log, the absolute value of u plus 1, plus 1 half natural log, the absolute value of u minus 1, plus c. And let's go ahead and distribute that 2. It happily cancels with the 1 half, so we'll have minus the natural log. But remember what u is, our original substitution was u is the square root of x plus 1. So this becomes the natural log of the square root of x plus 1 plus 1 plus natural log. Remember the 2 is canceling that 1 half. And I get the absolute value of x plus 1 to the 1 half minus 1 plus c. Okay, and that is it. That is our antiderivative, right? So a couple things I want us to notice about this. First of all, it was very not obvious what was the correct thing to do when this started, okay? So don't be fooled by the fact that I went straight through this. This was not my first attempt at this, uh, and I tried a couple of other things. This one feels like it's very close to being able to be done by a simple substitution, but none of them quite work. And so the next step was to make some substitutions, see what you get, see if you can find a route to an answer with what you get. If you don't get anywhere, you try something else, right? There is probably another route to this answer. I don't know it. We could probably work something out and, and find another way to get this, but this is one that works, okay? You can check that by taking the derivative. I'll leave that up to you. Um, I understand how complicated this is too. It's not obvious 
all the way through whether you're going in the right direction. And that is just something you have to accept. You have to say, all right, this doesn't look better than what I got. Is there anything I can do here? And try some things. And that is my number one piece of advice, trying some things. Uh, this algebraic trick here, adding zero, is a nice one. Long division would have worked, but this is a bit quicker. Uh, that put it into some nice formats. And then we have to be quick and comfortable enough with fractions and partial fractions to be able to come up with uh, this, this nice form that works out. Okay, that's it for this one. Thanks, everybody. I will see you next time.